Welcome back to Sanford Prime. And if you're new to this channel, I just print what comes to mind. Things I'm curious about, you know? What better way to satisfy curiosity about something than to design, print, and assemble it from scratch? Here's just a bunch of things I've been up to lately on this channel. All of these models I'm showing here are available for free to download from Thingiverse, Printables, and now Maker World. Some of my recent ones include this roulette shot glass spinner that was derived from the bearing and fidget spinners I made just before it. And all of these butterfly knife designs have been a blast to design and print. So what am I curious about today? You've probably already guessed from the video thumbnail and description. Sawhorses! There are loads of designs online for sawhorses. Basically any type of sawhorse you want, you can find something that gets you there, ranging from super simple to slightly complicated. After sifting through endless pictures, diagrams, reviews, and comments, I decided to just start from scratch. Why sawhorses? Well, my set was pretty old and fell apart this spring, and I just recently had to convert them into carbon. My old set was some I built up to stack on top of each other for storage. These aren't mine either. I couldn't exactly find anything like mine online, so I decided to model them up to show here. They had some sharper angles cut on the top of the legs and used plywood for the leg supports. The design I have in mind is more of a traditional folding set of sawhorses like these. But I gasped when I saw the price of them, and I'm gonna need two. I could just go cheap and get these out of the box and ready to go. But I have a 3D printer. Nah, no, not that one. More like this one. I also have a little bit of design experience. Before I get going, I want to make it difficult on myself and actually have a couple of end goals. The design's got to be 3D printable. I have an Ender 3, so the design has to fit on that printer. Then I haven't had foldable sawhorses yet, so let's go that route. To keep the cost down, or at least comparable to store-bought, they need to be less than a spool per set. Then what good is a sawhorse if it can't hold anything up? Here's the list of the five goals I hope to check off along the way. I'm mainly concerned with a less than one spool and decent strength though. That could be tough. And I don't want to bore you with the months of design it took me to get here. But here's the final design. Looks pretty cool, right? I know, you're wondering what the heck is that? I've been looking at this thing for a while myself and forgot to show you what the whole design looks like. Each set of legs is going to need two of these identical prints. And once I put them together, you'll see that they're able to pivot with each other like this. Now you're probably getting the idea of what part this is, and if I add the rest of it in, you'll get an idea of the scale of this thing. And if I add these two legs in, you'll quickly notice that I'm going to need four of the parts printed per sawhorse. Here's one set of 2x4 legs with the pivot brackets at the top. And I'm hoping to store them folded, so everything's looking good for that so far. Let's add in the 2x4 crossbar with the other set of legs and brackets. And hey, it actually looks like a sawhorse now. You can call me a cheater, but I used wood along with 3D prints. How else was I supposed to do it? I mean, this horse is nearly three feet in all directions. My printer isn't that big. Each one of the legs alone measures 28 and a half inches. So back to the 3D printed part. I included all the screw holes to mount it to each of the 2x4s, some larger holes for <laughs> aesthetics, and zipper-like sort of piano hinge for a high-strength pivot. The orientation I designed around for 3D printing without supports is the big flat on the outside of it downward on the build plate. Any other orientation would need supports, in my head I just thought this would be the strongest printing orientation with the low direction. I can't back that up with anything, it might not be, I don't know. Well, I guess the foldable design is out of the way now. I had to make some design sacrifices to get this down to about a day of print time and less than 250 grams of material. But here's the final design all sliced up. Man, I could almost fit two of these on one print bed. Oh well, it's too late now. Yeah, the holes weren't only for aesthetics. They were added to make the part lighter. But with each hole, there's a framework with solid wall layers around it which actually makes it stronger. And they're not placed in any higher strain areas either, so it kind of makes the mini truss out of it. In trying to get this down from 48 hours of print time and a half spool of material for each, I had to adjust some slicer settings. For reference, here's what I used. The wall and top and bottom thicknesses are set at 1.8 millimeters. I would have liked to see double this. The same goes for the gyroid infill density set at 14%. For real parts like this, I would have preferred 30% or better. Okay, so I think I can check two more items off this list now. I guess the next thing is to throw it onto the printer. And before I do that, I'm starting with a fresh roll of brand new filament I ordered just to make these. Would it surprise you if I said they were going to be yellow? I mean, it's only appropriate since the final design ended up looking like Swiss cheese, right? Without further ado, here's the next 27 hours of my life shrunk into 16 seconds. I have so many good emotions right now, I'd actually finish without issue. 
Oh wow, who put all this glue stick on my print bed? I'm gonna have to rinse this off. And here it is. I can't tell you how excited I am to see that it came off as nice as this. No warpage, no seam splitting, no cleanup besides the glue really. A little bit of Z banding, but I can live with that. I don't know if all 2x4s are identical, and I did give it some additional clearance so it wasn't tight. Hey, it fits. All four of the screw holes look like they're going to contact the board in the right spots. That's not the only thing I need to check though. Originally, I was going to use a large nail or something to use as a pivot pin, but I came across this steel dowel rod the last time I was in the store, and I couldn't beat the price so I had to incorporate it. It's 3 16 inch diameter and a little longer than what I need for the sawhorse. I checked the diameter before I printed and gave it a hopefully snug but not too snug a fit. It's actually pretty close to the 3 16 listed, and once the part was printed I tried the dowel out with the print for another check before the next long haul print slight forces needed to get it through. Lastly, I wanted to make sure that it was under 250 grams as the slicer showed. I don't want the last print to run out of material 20 minutes before it finishes or anything. I don't know, do they give you one kilogram exactly on those spools? Do they overshoot or undershoot? Huh, that's surprising. I could have almost gotten five per spool. And why is that so different than what the slicer said? What the heck? Not bad. Just like that I have a second one. And one full set. I know the rest of it works so far, now I just need to see if the hinge tabs fit into the slots. Nice. Alright, just gotta get the holes lined up and see if I can get the pin through both halves. It's a little snug, but that's the way I wanted it. So the top part is supposed to fit around the 2x4, so let's get one of them in and see how it goes. Yeah, I'm not disappointed, I'm beginning to think this just might work. A quick range of motion test for the folding part of it. Yeah, I can live with that. Let's get the parts for the third and fourth ones going. And just like that, it's been three days. You probably think that it's all unicorns and rainbows with 3D printing. Just press go and the parts come off 20 minutes later, ready to go. But in the middle of running these prints, I woke up one morning to this. Do you see anything wrong here? By how high the nozzle is, I'd say it would have just about been done here which brought me to weighing all the ones I've done so far to make sure I had enough filament left. I already know the first one came in underweight from what the slicer said. I guess I want to see what the consistency is. Was the first one a fluke? What's the tolerance on finished weight on these things? Yeah, they're all pretty close. Definitely was enough filament left to finish her up. Well, it's been days since I started this thing in Salabricks and forgot how wide this thing is. I guess I gotta go old school and actually measure it to figure out how long the pins need to be. Looks like about 4 inches is gonna work for them. Let's get this thing clamped up and marked out so I can cut it. One pin. Two pins. Ah, hot! And these things aren't sliding through the hinge holes with these big old burrs on the ends. I figured I'd knock them down a bit first. So I know the pins fit through here just fine. It allows the two halves to pivot freely, but I'm afraid it's going to fall out one day and leave me with a big old mess to clean up. It's snug enough that it doesn't fall out on its own, but it still worries me. Let's get it out of there and see what can be done. I figured I'd just smash over the end of it slightly to flare it to a larger diameter and make it a press fit for the last little bit. And for that I'll be using brute force. And just like that, it's a little wider on one axis. Hopefully it's enough. The other end is just left tapered so I can feed it through. Let's see how it works here. Yeah, I'm gonna have to tap this in with a hammer. I like the way it's working so far. Well, I think that one's good to go. Let's get the second one together with a pin and all. Now I have enough to make one sawhorse. And I think I can knock one more off the list. I just proved it's 3D printable. So yeah, the whole sawhorse isn't going to be 3D printed. I have these 2x4s obviously that I'm going to use. They're 8 feet long or 96 inches, which made me change one of the dimensions of the horse. Initially I had the legs at 28 and a half inches. 
If I split up the 96 inch long board this way, I have an unusable drop left over. So I decided to extend the legs to 32 inches and get an even three pieces without any left over. Okay, so I'll just get these marked out and cut to 32 inches then. The nice thing about doing this too, by making just two cuts, I actually get three pieces. Otherwise it would have been a third cut for three pieces, right? Yeah, I'm working on the ground. I don't have saw horses, remember? And three cuts and four pieces later, I just saved back some of the time I spent 3D printing the brackets. Not too bad for a circular saw. Probably should have sucked these on the miter saw, but they all look to be about the same length. I just want to clean up the splinters on the edges a little bit before I put everything together. And one more piece for the crossboard. All the boards are cut. I'm ready to get it all together now. I don't really have a good plan for assembly. I guess I'll just try to dry fit everything together, starting with getting the legs into their slots here. Seems to work so far as long as it doesn't fall over and break on me. Second set of legs, alright. Slide the crossbar in and get the brackets and legs pushed to the ends. And as tempted as I am to push down on it, I better get some screws in it first. Most of the screws I'm using for this are these number 8 by 1 and 5 8 long deck screws. I bought a pound of them, but it needs a fraction of this box. And let's get them all into the screw holes. I'm actually being pretty gentle with the last little bit of the screw. This drill I'm pretty sure has enough torque to blow the screw right through the end of the 3D print. Well, the legs are attached now, but I still have to get the screws into the ends of the legs. For that, I'll be taking off the top board. There's two screws here per leg for eight total screws. I put these in to take some of the strain off the print when loaded. And these screws are required to be a little bit longer. For these, I went with number nine by three inch deck screws. Now that those are all in, let's get the top board back in and get it screwed into place. It's a little bit more manageable now too, compared to the dry fit where the legs were just still too loose and trying to fall out the whole time. Okay, back to the short screws. And I'm just attaching one side of these ones. I still want to be able to fold this for storage. The other side has holes, but all the pieces are the same and they can be used, but it wasn't my intent. Now, okay, I can't resist the temptation to load it with some weight. I honestly didn't expect that. These things feel solid. And just like that, one sawhorse is done. I was really just making these because I was curious at how strong they could be. And I honestly expected them to fail right away. I had some metal brackets on standby for long term, but I'm thinking I might be taking the other ones back. Alright, but that wasn't really a good load test. Let's really get it tested. For that I have these cement blocks left over from a paper patio I did last summer. I knew there was a reason I was keeping them around. Well, they're going to come in handy today. Each one of these long blocks weighs 10 pounds. Same with these square blocks, also 10 pounds each. I already know this thing is strong enough to support me. But in order to really test the sawhorse, I'm going to need two sawhorses. Yeah, I spent another week printing it. And to stack the blocks on top, I have the remaining 2x4s and a small piece of plywood. These pieces have quite a bit of weight to them too, ringing in at just over 35 pounds. I figured I'd want to know the total weight these horses are holding, and this seems like a significant figure, right? Let's get the table together so I can stack the blocks on.
It kind of feels like I have the beginning of a house of cards here. I hope it doesn't come tumbling down like all the other houses of cards I've done. And a wagon load of blocks. These things are heavy altogether. Okay, so the plywood in 2x4 is weighed up at 35 pounds, and each block is 10 pounds. So I'm going to keep track in the corner here. Okay, not bad, 105 pounds. I figured it would be good until here. I wasn't really gonna be scared until about 200 pounds or so, so let's keep them going. Into the square 10 pound blocks now. And at just over 200 pounds, this is where I don't know what happens next. Anyways, let's keep pushing it. Okay, well, it's holding 305 pounds now. I don't know what I'd be putting on here besides these blocks that's this heavy. I'm actually kind of impressed. But I still have some blocks left, so let's keep it going. Three hundred and fifty-five pounds. This is incredible. This is as much as some of the cheaper saw horses were rated at. And my wagon's empty. Time to get another load. I honestly thought for sure these things would crumble by now. 355 pounds. There is no sign that these are going to fail anytime soon either. I haven't heard one creak or crack out of them. All four of them haven't budged. So I'm out of the 4x16 blocks and the 8x8 blocks. All I have left are these 4x8 blocks and they're 5 pounds each so let's get them loaded on. And it's up to 405 pounds now. This is as much load as the metal brackets I showed earlier in the video. This is just unbelievable to me. But I still have a few blocks left so here we go. That's all the blocks I have, all 475 pounds of them. I could find some random things, weigh them, and force these things to break, but I think I'm happy here. Nothing I'm ever going to use these for is 475 pounds. These things have proven themselves to be worthy, and there's no sense in wasting the print time so I can just break them for a video. And keep in mind that I didn't put the second side of screws in the top piece. These are still foldable. 